By 2019, Morgan Three Wheeler is kind of what I would consider a modern vintage classic. It was made in Malvern, England in the same facility they made these Morgans over 100 years ago. In 1909, Henry Frederick Stanley Morgan designed and built his first single-seater, three-wheeled experimental car. Today, the Morgan three-wheeler continues to be one of the purest forms of motoring fun in the automotive world. I've owned over 65 cars, and I guess I've begun to gravitate towards cars that are lightweight and um, lower power. I've owned cars that are extremely high power, but where I drive, if it's not on the track in the streets of New England where they're weavy and windy, I really prefer something that's very engaging versus driving a car at 70 miles an hour in second gear around town. I like the Morgan from that standpoint. The three-wheeler is very much a handmade car. As you can imagine, it offers plenty of quirks that come along with owning something put together by a small, low-volume manufacturer. Driving something that looks like a torpedo with a V-twin engine on the front, going through a Miata transmission to a Quaife bevel box to a single rear wheel with two four-inch skinny tires on the front, it's just like driving nothing else. Between the two front wheels is a 2-liter V-twin from Wisconsin bike engine maker s and It's an interesting design as it has a 56-degree V angle opposed to the traditional 45 degrees, which allows for bigger pistons. One thing I've noticed, even though I've owned so many different cars, many of them so unique, one experience I've had with this car I've never had with another car is I'll be driving down the street and a young kid, maybe from age 9 to 12, will see the car and start yelling and screaming and jumping up and down and pointing. I've never had that experience with another car before. In 2021, Morgan will cease production of the three-wheeler. Sadly, its wonderful s and engine will no longer meet emission requirements in Europe. So I used to have a Morgan Plus 8 and I was getting it serviced at the dealer in New York and I asked them to go for a test ride in the Morgan three-wheeler, and I've had this experience before with other cars. I sat in the passenger seat and went for a ride, and I really didn't like it. And he, he allowed me to drive it back. Uh, kind of, he wasn't allowed to drive it briskly. I had to keep it kind of slow. And I really didn't care for the experience, so I decided it wasn't for me. But years later, I kept watching videos and, and talking with uh, folks online, and I decided maybe this is what I missed my Caterham Super 7s. I missed driving 1,300 pounds of aluminum and steel, and so this is what I ended up doing on a sort of a, on a risky buy, because you can't really go out and test drive these at the local dealer, and I'm really happy I did. Getting into the Morgan is an event in itself. You have to slide into the car, put on the necessary safety gear like a helmet and goggles, you have to flip an ignition guard like it's a fighter jet, and when you push the start button, the engine rumbles to life. One thing that I've noticed since I've owned this car is all my other vehicles, including my motorcycles, my cars, all my other things that are mechanical and entertain me have seemed to have taken a very big back seat. I spend so much time in this car. Its cockpit is small and exposed to the elements. The driving experience is noisy and entirely unconventional. But it's for these reasons you'll drive everywhere with a grin on your face.
If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more content on exotic cars, sports cars, and classic cars, please click the logo in the center of the screen to subscribe.